your audio is clipping. There's no excuse for that. No, I sound pretty good here, right? This is the Sony ZV-1. Yeah, now you can see me on the Hero 10. Hi. Yeah, that was a little bit quieter, wasn't it? But in this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for proper mic placement to get the audio right without clipping. Without clipping. So, like I was saying, it sounds pretty good from here, but if I move back, now I'm really quiet. Now I'm really quiet. Did you hear me any better? And why am I on the roof? Because I wanted coffee. Yes, I am on the roof of my house. <laughs> what this means is, I don't get asked questions by the neighbors. They don't want to talk to me because they figure I'm weird enough. But also, did I mention that there's coffee on this roof? A whole mug of it. See? And it's a little bit more danger for my cameras. So obviously, this is not the ideal scenario to record a video, but I know my distances. I know I'm a few feet, there's some ambient noise. I know I'm probably 20 feet from the GoPro Hero 10. Can you even see it? You probably can't even see it anymore. It's back there. There it is. I don't know, whatever. It was either in focus or it wasn't. I don't care. You know it's back there. I know it's back there. Moving on. If you know your distances, you can handle some things. And I learned something with the ZV-1 I'm gonna share in a little bit. And we're gonna take a look at some ways of fixing it in DaVinci Resolve. But this is too much fun not to do, right? So, first trick is, we're gonna swap from the in-camera mics to a different mic setup. Wait a minute, it's in my pocket. Yes, the Rode Wireless Go. I bought this a couple years ago. I'm gonna pop it on the camera. Now we should be on the road, okay. Yep, there's my trailer. Neighbors definitely aren't gonna ask questions now. But wait, what's this? I'm several feet away from that camera. It's because I have this. It's probably really loud right now, so I should talk quieter. It's because I have this. And it's aimed at me, so it's gonna work good. Hold on. So even without the wind muff thing installed, that's probably pretty loud. And you know, I've gotten pretty good audio in a lot of circumstances. In my never ending quest to record everything. Yeah, we got a leaf blower, let's get up on the roof. Hey, there's the snow! <laughs> the things I'll do for content, right? But even that didn't prepare me for what we're gonna learn next. I can actually go in while I'm recording, hit, if I can hit the button on the back, there it is. We'll dial this down and you can hear my voice getting quieter as we go. Now I shouldn't be clipping anymore. Now my audio is clean. I have cleaned up the audio from the source so I can say, welcome back my friends. How are you today? This is Road Reality on the roof. It's the reality on the roof. I'm not a fiddler on a roof, but I need more coffee. <laughs> so now we've had some audio that clips, some audio that doesn't clip. Now I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you the tricks of fixing clipped audio, at least trying to minimize it because I ran into this in a recent edit and I was really pissed at myself because I didn't have the foresight to think about my audio levels. And now I can even see on the, the preview screen over here that uh, we're not clipping. We're getting up close, but we're not clipping because I did some testing and some learning. So let's go inside. Now, before I dive into DaVinci Resolve and show you tips and tricks, I wanna explain a couple of things that might make a little bit more sense coming up later. If you have a camera like the Hero 12 in a media mod, you can get, or even a Hero 9, you know, or another action camera, they tend to compress the audio and the louds become a little bit quieter and the quiet stuff becomes a little bit louder. So it's helping you out in that fashion. I've not been able to do any clipping, really. I mean, short of, you know, highway speed stuff, I don't get the GoPro to clip, right? The ZV-1 clips a lot more. It's got a more sensitive microphone. It's not wrapped in microfiber like this one here. This one's got a dead cat microfiber on it, and it can kind of mask some of the crazy sounds that normally would be coming through this microphone. Okay, now that we have that primer out of the way, I programmed a button on the back of the camera. So my trash can icon is now the audio recording level. 
And I've already added it to my menu on Sony. It's there at the bottom. And then if we scroll up to the top and go over to the world looking icon in green. So if we come down one and left two, we're at custom key. And you want the top one because the movie one and the playback one, they follow the photo one. And then we're gonna go ahead and you can see that custom button one, two, three, four, we're on custom button one, which is currently product showcase set, which I don't use. So I'm just gonna change that. And it gives you 20 different pages and you just scroll around till you see audio recording level. In my case, it's 12. If your camera's different, it may be another page. But we're gonna click on that one, boom. It takes the place of custom button two, apparently. It, I don't know how their numbering system works, but either way, you can program it to any of the four buttons. And from then on out, boom, that button you set now can change the volume even while you're recording, which is awesome. It's always best to fix it in camera before you have to do any editing, right? And we're gonna talk about that in a second too. I'm gonna to show some audio waveforms and kind of explain what I'm talking about. But let's go take a look at some footage. And here I have, five clips, they're all the same. It's the same setup here, but just uh, duplicated five times. And we have voice, we're gonna add the dialogue processor, the processor plus a volume adjustment, then we're gonna add a little bit of EQ, and then my secret sauce. And my secret sauce is some paid plugins that I use to clean up my audio. And it works wonders in this case. It wasn't perfect, but I got it pretty close. So first we're gonna play the original audio unprocessed, untouched. They don't make them like this anymore. This is the only tool we need. You see that? Yeah, JIS screwdriver, that's all we need. So look at these batteries. They appear to be the same size. So we're gonna drop the new one in and bolt it down. Not horrible. It, it's admittedly not a worst case scenario. You'd re-record it. But in this case, you can hear some boominess. Let's take a look at the audio waveform. And right here, you can see that it stays peaked for quite a while. Okay, if I blow this up, you can see that we're staying in the top half of the waveform for pretty much every time I'm talking. So we know the audio was too loud. For the next one, all we've done is add the dialogue processor. So if you go to effects, audio effects, Fairlight effects, dialogue processor, dropped it onto the track and we're good to go. No volume adjustments or anything. And let's take a listen. They don't make them like this anymore. This is the only tool we need. You see that? Yeah, JIS screwdriver, that's all we need. So look at these batteries. They appear to be the same size. So we're gonna drop the new one in and bolt it down. That sounded a little better, right? It's doing a little bit of limiting and compression and some other things for dialogue. I find that for me, this is the best DaVinci Resolve built-in plugin to help with the dialogue segments of my videos. I use it even in my secret sauce later on, you'll see, or here. For my next trick, we're gonna go with the dialogue processor plus a volume adjustment. I've adjusted these clips to minus 3.4 decibels each. You can do it on the clip or on the track, however you wanna play this game. But we have the dialogue processor here again, and it's literally just male VO, and, which is voiceover, and then the stock settings. So let's play back this clip. They don't make them like this anymore. This is the only tool we need. You see that? Yeah, JIS screwdriver, that's all we need. So look at these batteries. They appear to be the same size. So we're gonna drop the new one in and bolt it down. So we brought the volume down. It's a little less peaky, but you can tell in this last clip that where we looked at earlier, it's, uh, it's still the same peakiness because just like a photographer will say, oh, the whites are blown out or the darks are crushed, the camera loses that visual data at the ends. So you have to expose properly for the conditions. Same thing with audio. You've got your high volume and your low volume. You need to find the right balance and or extend your range, really. And that's what lowering the volume would do for us. It would give us a better range of highs and lows that we're not getting because we're peaked. We're peaked at the top the whole way across and we can't get that data back. Our second to last clip, we're gonna add a little bit of EQ. And you can do this under the audio, under inspector. If you don't see it, click here. The inspector there, you can scroll down to equalizer or you can do it in the Fairlight tab. But I literally just grabbed the two and dragged it down, grabbed the three, dragged it up a little bit. 
Honestly, I think it sounds a little bit better. Just a smidge, just to fix it up a little bit. And it may not even be necessary if you've got a couple of plugins that I'm using. They're paid plugins. I bought them with my own money, but I use them in all my videos. And I really think they bring my audio quality to the next level. So let's take a look at the dialogue processor plus the volume plus the EQ, or rather listen to it. Let's go. They don't make them like this anymore. This is the only tool we need. You see that? Yeah, JIS screwdriver. That's all we need. So look at these batteries. They appear to be the same size. So we're gonna drop the new one in and bolt it down. All right, did you hear the difference there? What I heard was the audio is slightly less muddy because when it gets to that peaky level, sort of kind of gets a little bit boomy. I just found that this equalizer tip just kind of bumps that quality up one notch, okay? And then we're gonna get, we're just gonna jump right into it. The secret sauce, this is how I do all my voice tracks in like all my videos. So let's take a look at that. Yes, I called it secret sauce. Under effects, we have clarity VX. So that's doing the background noise cancellation. Got that one set to 65%. Then we have the dialogue processor. And the only difference is here, I have turned off the D-rumble because I want to keep a little bit of the low end. Then we have one knob brighter stereo, and that is set to two, two out of 10. Now I showed it off in another video, I'm sure. I record this stuff well in advance. Anyway, one knob brighter, it gets rid of the muddiness. It handles that EQ for you, but on a dynamic level. So I highly recommend it. And I'm pretty sure that it was like 20 bucks. It was either 20 or 40 from Waves. I'll leave a link in the description below, but they do wonders and they're not expensive. So if you've got a couple of bucks laying around, you can buy these plugins. I highly recommend them. If you're using them, leave me a comment below. I wanna know if somebody else is using the same plugins. But let's go ahead and listen to the secret sauce. They don't make them like this anymore. This is the only tool we need. You see that? Yeah, JIS screwdriver, that's all we need. So look at these batteries. They appear to be the same size. So we're gonna drop the new one in and bolt it down. Not too shabby, right? I mean, that you gotta admit, that made a world of difference in what amounts to a few seconds of dragging and dropping some effects on and setting one level per. I mean, that's gotta be pretty easy, right? And I think it does a better job of cleaning up the audio than anything else that I have tried. If you've tried something else to clean up your audio, I am all ears, pun intended, leave a comment below. And before we close this one out, I do wanna mention that a lot of the stuff that works in Resolve is gonna work in a lot of other audio editors and video editors. So give it a play, give it a whirl, try it out on your own stuff, see if you can get it to work better because better audio is always a good thing. So that's that. If you're a loud person like me, you can get great audio without clipping if you just know a little bit more about your cameras. So I always invite you, learn more about your cameras. And until the next video, here's another one to watch and the two mantras. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. Maybe it's opening the owner's manual. Hmm, bye. Now, how am I going to get down from here with my coffee and my cameras? Uh, it sounds like, sounds like something I should have thought through.